Hey guys, welcome to my channel. First of all, I want to say that I'm really, really sorry that this video did not go up last week like I said it was going to. Um, I actually did film it and I didn't like how it turned out and then once I refilmed it, then I was having some technical problems. So I just thought I'll put it up this week and I'm really excited. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, our first case file that we're going to talk about is going to be the John Benet Ramsey case. And this is a case that's really, really popular, especially around this time of year because this is when it happened. Um, and I would say it's probably one of the most infamous true crime cases out there. Um, and it's a case that is really, really frustrating because it feels like the answer is right there. And I think most people have their own theories, but the evidence just isn't there to prove what actually happened. So let's get into the case. We're first going to talk about the family. Um, John Benet's parents were John and Patsy Ramsey, and she had an older brother, Bert, who was nine at the time of her death. And from what I found online, John Benet was just your average six year old little girl. She liked to play outside. She liked to play with her friends and her brother. Uh, she got a bike for Christmas that she was really excited about. And she was just your average normal little girl. I found a story from their previous housekeeper who said that um, when she was little, he would rake the leaves during the fall. And every time he would get the leaves all raked up into a pile, she would come running and jump into the pile of leaves. And so it just proves like she was a normal little girl. Um, I think that the media kind of latched on to the idea that she was this pageant queen, this um, little beauty queen. And so that's kind of what she's infamous for. So Christmas of 1996 was just a normal Christmas. They got up and opened their presents. And that afternoon they went to their friend's house to have a Christmas dinner. And they stayed there until about nine or 9.30, I think. And that's when the family decided it was time to head home. So they drove home and the family said that John Benet had fallen asleep in the car and that John carried her up to her bedroom and put her to bed. And that was the last time that they saw her that night. At 5.52 a.m. the next morning, um, 911 received a phone call from Patsy Ramsey and in the 911 call she was reporting her daughter missing um, she said that she had found a ransom note and that it said that her daughter had been kidnapped and we'll get into the ransom note it's crazy I'm at 5515 Street what's going on there ma'am we have a kidnapping all right please explain to me what's going on okay there we have a there's a note left and our daughter's gone a note was left in your daughter's yes. gone? How old is your daughter? She's six years old. She's blonde. Six years old. How long ago was it? I don't know. I just found the note. And my daughter's gone. Does it say who took her? What? Does it say who took her? I don't know. It's, there's, a, there's a ransom note here. It's a ransom note? It says SBTC. Victory. Please. Okay, what's your name? Are you Patsy Pat Ramsey? I'm the mother. Oh my God! Please. I'm okay. I'm sending an officer over. Okay. Please. Do you know how long she's been gone? No, I don't. Please, we just got out and she's not here. Oh my God! Please. Okay. Please, well, somebody. I am, honey. Please. Take a deep breath. Please. Me, okay? Hurry, hurry, hurry. Patsy. 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 The ransom note was three pages long, and that's not usual with a ransom note. Um, a lot of the investigators and people that have looked into this case have said that the ransom note honestly just looks fake, um, just from the length of it and the things that were said in the ransom note. It doesn't look like it was ever a real kidnapping for ransom. So like I said, the ransom note was three pages long and it was written from a notepad that was found in the Ramsey home and also written with a pen that was found in the Ramsey home. So this automatically was kind of weird that they found the exact notebook that the ransom note was written in and it was also in the family's home. Um, and then on top of that, the fact that it was three pages long, that means that whoever wrote this note came into the home or 
was in the home already, sat down and wrote a three page ransom note. It just doesn't make any sense. Usually ransom notes are a few lines long. You know, they wanna get to the point. We have your child, this is where you'll find her when you give us this amount of money. And that's not how this ransom note was at all. It was very long. It was um, rambling. There were a lot of movie references, which was kind of strange. And another reason why the police thought that maybe it was faked because it just seemed like they were going off of what they saw in the movies. And in the note, it specifically asked for $118,000, which is the exact amount that John was getting for his Christmas bonus that year. So whoever wrote the note was either very, very lucky or they personally knew John's finances and how much he was getting for his bonus that year. Another reason why a lot of people think that the family was involved in writing this note. Something really interesting that I found online about the note was the use of words and phrases in the note. Um, matched up to a lot of phrases that the family was later known to have said. Um, and some Ramsey supporters say that yes, they did say these things and yes, they were in the note, but they saw the note so many times, they read it, they wrote it so many times that they kind of just picked up on that language. So you can kind of take it for what you think it is but it is interesting so i thought i would let you know um one of the main things that i saw was the phrase and hence generally speaking the proper way to say that would be you would just say hence you wouldn't need and hence it it doesn't make any sense to say it that way but that's how it was written in the note and then later on it was found in the ramsey's christmas card from 1997 that they put the exact phrase in the christmas card so i'll read to you what their christmas card said it said, had there been no birth of Christ, there would be no hope of eternal life and hence, no hope of ever being with our loved ones ever again. And so, I mean, you could take it for what it is. It's just a, a phrase that they said, but it is interesting that it was in their Christmas card in 1997 and also in the ransom note in 1996. Kind of the last thing that was a little bit strange was the note was signed SBTC Victory which nobody has ever figured out what SBTC means. Um, some people theorize maybe it means saved by the cross. Um, Patsy was a very religious woman, um, so they think maybe that's why she put that, but nobody knows for sure. The police did analyze the family's handwriting. John was cleared. They said there's no way he wrote this note. Patsy, on the other hand, was not officially cleared. It was undetermined whether or not she wrote the note. Um, a lot of handwriting experts think that she did. The lettering is very similar and some of the things said in the note sounds a lot like Patsy in the way that she spoke. And so experts kind of lean towards she did write it. And I think a lot of people really do think that she did it, wrote the ransom note, um, but it's never been completely proven to be true or not true that she wrote it. So after the 911 call, Patsy pretty immediately decided that she was going to call over her friends. So her friends kind of dropped everything at six o'clock in the morning and came straight over to the Ramsey house and they were there all day. The police arrived pretty soon after the friends arrived and that's kind of when they started to take a look around. They didn't look too hard I don't believe just because they thought that this was a kidnapping and so they weren't looking for a body they were looking for maybe an entry or an exit and so um, I know that one of the police officers actually did go down to the basement that morning and he went up to the door of the wine cellar and thought about it but then saw that there was a latch on the outside of the door so he knew that there was no possible way that anybody went out that door to escape and leave with John Bonet, so he never opened the door. And we'll get into later why that was such a big problem. They were supposed to get a phone call between 8 and 10 a.m. and after that time had come and gone and there was no phone call, the police pretty much left at that point. Um, they took all of the investigators, all of the police officers, everybody left, leaving only one detective, and that was Detective Linda Arndt. And she was there to kind of control everybody that was in the house, the Ramseys and their friends. And this was a huge problem. Um, 
it was too many people for one detective to take care of and there were too many emotions. Detective Arndt could tell that tensions were getting pretty high at this point and so to occupy John she sent him and his friend um, to search the house just to look for any clues, look for something that didn't wasn't supposed to be there or maybe that was missing and so she said to search the house top to bottom. At this point John and his friend went directly to the basement and this is when they found John Bonet's body. So a lot of people kind of question the detective told you to go look at the house top to bottom and you went directly to the basement directly to where your daughter's body was found which is kind of not great um so people kind of question that and it maybe makes john look pretty guilty so when john Benny's body was found it was found with a garrote tied around her neck her hands were bound above her head um, her mouth was covered with duct tape and she was covered with a light colored blanket and so when john found her this way he immediately ran over and took the tape off of her mouth and pretty quickly after that decided that he was going to carry her upstairs so he took her upstairs and laid her on the floor and this is so bad um because he was contaminating all of the evidence that was there he took the tape off of her mouth he tried to unbind her hands he removed the blanket and then at this point to make matters even worse Detective Arndt then moved her body a second time into the living room. So at this point, she had been carried by two people. She had been moved twice. Um, Patsy had been brought in at this point, and so she was touching the body, and then they covered her with another blanket. And so all of the evidence was just completely tampered with, and I don't think that it was on purpose. Obviously, on Detective Arndt's part, Maybe it was on the Ramsey's part. I don't know. So that's kind of the timeline of how things happened that morning. Um, now we'll kind of get into the investigation and how it was really, really messed up from the very beginning. Um, the first thing is that the police allowed all of the Ramsey's friends to be in the house. Um, they kind of had free reign over the house. I know that at one point somebody was cleaning the kitchen counters with bleach. I believe people were kind of going in and out of John Bonet's room until the police had sealed that. And so it was just completely all of the evidence that they would have had, it was gone. And then the fact that they left Detective Linda Arndt alone to take care of all of these people. Um, and then she allowed John and his friend to go searching the house and they are the ones that found the body. And like I said, we know how that was messed up. And so all of these things just completely ruined the case and ruined the crime scene from the very, very beginning. And it was the Boulder Police Department's fault. Um, they should have done a much better job, even though it was only a kidnapping. At this point, they still should have controlled the scene and not let people in and just taking care of it. So before we get into the theories, I do wanna mention that in 1998, a grand jury convened and they did tons of interviews. They looked over all of the evidence that was available and they ultimately decided that they should indict the Ramseys on charges of child abuse resulting in death. So this is a big, um, big arrow pointing towards the Ramsey saying this grand jury looked at all of the evidence provided interviewed tons and tons of people and they believe that the Ramseys were involved um that doesn't necessarily mean that they thought John and Patsy killed John Benet but they definitely do believe that they were involved in some kind of a way um I think most people take that as they allowed John Benet to be in the situation that caused her death. So they said, yeah, we went to indict the Ramseys. However, District Attorney Alex Hunter decided he was not going to sign off on this indictment. He did not believe that he had the evidence he needed to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Ramseys were involved and he didn't think that he could get a conviction so he did not sign off on it and the Ramseys never went to trial so there are a lot of theories as to what happened that night 
I think there are kind of two sides though. One side is that the Ramses did it. The Ramses were involved. The other side is that there was an intruder and the intruder did it. And then there's kind of limbs off of that, those two trees. So the first kind of theory with the Ramses is that Patsy did it and that it involved some kind of a bedwetting accident. Um, I know that John Bonet had a history of bedwetting, and so some people believe that she wet the bed that night and Patsy just got angry and kind of lost control and maybe hit her on the head, or maybe she pushed her over and she fell into the bathtub or something hard like that, and then they decided, oh, this is really bad, and so they covered it up at that point. Another big theory, and I think this is the theory that most people at this point believe happened, is that there was a fight between Burke and John Bonet. Um, I've seen a lot of people say that it was a fight over pineapple because there was a bowl of pineapple found on the dining room table that next morning, and the Ramses acted very weird about this bowl of pineapple. They at first, I think, denied that they ever gave the bowl of pineapple, and then they changed their story and they said, well, maybe we gave the bowl of pineapple. And so it was just really strange and there's no reason to act that way about fruit. So most people believe that there was um, a snack there for Burke. He was eating the pineapple and maybe John Bonet came up and just stole a little piece, ran off, and it just angered him to the point that he hit her in the head. Um, and then at that point, the parents obviously found out and to protect Burke, they decided to cover up the murder. Um, another theory that kind of goes along with that would be that Burke was playing with a Christmas present that night and maybe John Bonet came over and broke the present leading to the fight leading to the death. So um, I think this is the most widely believed theory at this time that Burke did it and the parents covered it up at that point to protect their their child and then there are tons and tons and tons of intruder theories um i mean any anywhere from santa did it to um, a man named michael helgoff and i believe that he actually told a friend that he killed a little girl and that was caught on tape and then a few weeks later he was found dead from an apparent suicide so um he is kind of a, a leading theory in the intruders um and then there was john mark carr he told investigators that he killed john bonnet and they arrested him and once they started looking into the evidence and looking into him, it was found that there is absolutely no way that he did this. I believe he was in Georgia and he was found on camera in Georgia that night. So there's no way that he could have killed her, but he still confessed to the murder. So I don't know, he's just a weirdo. And I think he was just obsessed with the case and wanted to involve himself in it. And he probably knew that at some point they would figure out that he didn't do it and he just wanted to be a part of history, I guess. I don't know, but he did not do it. And then there are a lot of other intruder theories. Um, and I could get into all of them, but this video would be five hours long. So I suggest that you go do your own research if you're interested in this case. You will go down a rabbit hole. And I mean, there's just so much information. I tend to sit on the fence. I go back and forth on what I think happened. It makes a lot of sense to me that the family is involved just because they found her in the home. The ransom note was written in the home. Um, just the way that the family acted in interviews later on, they weren't super cooperative with police. And I mean, if it, it were me, I would, be doing everything that I could and doing every single police interview that I could to help bring justice to my child. And so I don't understand why they weren't doing that unless they were guilty. But then other times I'll see something and I'll think, oh, it must have been an intruder. So I honestly don't know, um, but I would love to get your theories. Um, I love to see new information. And actually one thing that I have been wanting to get information on, and maybe one of you has this information, is the Ramseys said that night that Burke was playing with a toy as they were kind of putting John Bonet to bed. 
and he he refused to go to sleep until he could play with this toy and put it together. And I'm so interested to see what this toy was and if there is a crime scene photo of this toy because I feel like if there is a photo of this toy and it's broken, I mean, there you go. I mean, that pretty much tells you what happened, right? So I'm very interested in that. So if anybody has a picture of this toy that they think he was playing with, I would be very, very interested to see that. Um, but yeah, if you have a different theory, if you have more evidence maybe pointing towards an intruder theory, I would love to see that. I would love to see more evidence pointing towards the Ramses that I didn't say here. And like I said, there's so, so much information in this case that I just didn't, I mean, I didn't even hit the tip of the iceberg. Like there's so much. But I'm super interested to see what you guys think about this. And being this close to the crime, as far as the time of year, it's just, it's a great time to start looking into it again. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. I love true crime and I love investigating cases and I would love to do more and I hope to do more. I think that's what this channel is going to be, just true crime cases. Um, this was an unsolved case. I'm going to try to do some missing persons cases, um, maybe some solved cases too, because those are always interesting. So if you have any ideas for cases, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, I obviously have cases that I want to do, but um, I always love to get new ideas. So please leave it down below and let me know. Also, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up so that I know. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.